Well, materialism, from the point of view of someone interested in, obsessed with consciousness, materialism has its obvious problem. It gives rise to the so-called hard problem of consciousness. How does subjective experience arise from objective activities in a brain? I think it's a misposed question, because ultimately we have to get rid of this duality. Materialism can't account for subjective experience, and idealism can't account for the, the, the material world at all easily. Can experience in any way, practicing different experiences to look into the nature of the universe, help at all? Well, here's my adventures at the moment. I would say I'm a bit obsessed. I'm glad to be invited on this panel because I'm a bit obsessed in an ignorant, exploring kind of way about the stuff of the universe. So one thing I, I tend to do, this time of year, it would be in my greenhouse late at night. I've been working hard all day, like the song goes, I sure, sure get stoned at night. And I um, have a spliff and sit there and start thinking. Now, one of the ways this will go will be, OK, do that meditation thing I'm used to, drop duality. I can't do it intellectually, but I can do it experientially. Self disappears into stuff. There's just stuff happening. Now. That's fine, as I said, it's an experience, but I don't know how to make that work as a kind of a, a, of a theory. And um, what I then can start to think about one direction to go is, well, where does the material fit in this? If you think about a scientist, or me, you know, even doing experiments and so on, all you've ever got is somebody's experience, even if that's looking into a Hadron Collider or looking at the, the readouts of, of, uh, uh, of instruments. So that, that pushed me over to the uh, idealism side. But then I think, well, how can we agree? And you've both touched on this in a way, because we agree, certainly about mathematics, on another planet, you know, other aliens wouldn't call them electrons and protons, but they'd presumably discover something similar. So I'm forced into a kind of absolutely no idea what this stuff is, but we are agreeing about it somehow. And this is a very deep, I don't know. Here's another <laughs> one. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, ignorance, it's, it's very nice to be applauded for ignorance. Um, here's another one. This is another one founded in meditation. Uh, and I've only recently um, uh, begun to explore this. There's a classic Zen koan that says, look behind your own face. And until recently, I thought that was just some kind of metaphor, because a lot of koans actually take you off in all kinds of weird directions. But I found myself on a recent retreat literally doing that. And it was a very, very weird experience, because it felt as though I was looking from the outside in, as well as looking from the inside out. And it had different kinds of weirdness depending where I was, whether I was just in silent meditation or walking around in the silent retreat. Um, but interestingly, what I saw has been described, it's, I mean, it's supposed to be ineffable, you can't really say much about it. Um, the best description I've ever read was a man who was poisoned by morphine in Thailand, and he woke up in a horrible hospital with dirt everywhere, and you know, very happy and content, and he said, it's as though the back of my head has been sawn off, and behind is the dazzling darkness. Now, my experience was of seeing kind of an intense nothingness, a nothingness with a nothingness that somehow seemed to be alive. And I guess this may be something like what people are talking about, the ground of being, or something of that kind. I don't know. But experientially, it's really, really interesting to explore these things. But this gave the impression that it is out of this alive nothingness that comes behavior and talking and all the kinds of things, and the duality of the illusion of self and all the other dualisms that come about. But but, but what is it? I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's to say something completely unhelpful, really. There's a kind of something, nothing out of which everything comes doesn't really get you anywhere. But I throw out these experiences uh, in case they're at all relevant. And really, my only pitch is, I'm really struggling with this one. <laughs> Did you know that the Institute of Arts and Ideas also has a podcast? Philosophy for Our Times brings you the biggest ideas from the leading thinkers around the world every week. Search for Philosophy for Our Times and subscribe today on your favourite podcast platform, SoundCloud or iTunes to make sure you never miss an episode.